It's the Rowe Khan Show with me, Anna DeVlantis. We've got the Justin Kaufman in the studio. We've got the Richard Roper (laughs) in the studio. And Richard Roper is sponsored by Archidec and all of his reviewing. And i got to turn Richard's mic on so we can actually hear from him there. Thanks, Archidec. Nope, still no. No? Thanks, Architect. No, it's working now. There it is. There it is. Yeah, it's working now. That's a couple of bugs hey. Out of that. Hey, Rich. Hey guys. How you doing, man? I doing saw great. your uh, social media post that, like, hey, you got so much going on. This, uh, uh, this, I think, the most reviews I've ever written in one week. I wrote what? 11 or 12 wow. this week. So what we, we're going to pick and choose, yeah, guys. Right. So I yeah. thought we'll start off with a couple of the big ones. Men in Black International. It's like with Mission Impossible, but they put that colon in the middle. Mission Impossible, more money for crews. This is Men in Black, colon, international. But no Will Smith. No Will Smith, no Tommy Lee Jones. Spoiler what? alert, too, for people who are wondering. They don't show up at any point in this movie. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to spoil yeah. it for you because I don't want you to see this yeah. movie anyway. <laughs> you know, the first Men in Black movie was 20 years ago. It's amazing when you uh-huh. think about that. And at the time, the special effects were really cool. And what I liked about the first one in particular was that Tommy Lee Jones played it as straight as if he were playing... Lieutenant Gerard and the Fugitive, Absolutely. right? You know, right. His, and which made it so funny. And then Will Smith was doing his Will Smith thing, you know, the brash young kid who was learning at his feet. But that gave the story some heft, you know? It right. made it kind of, in a weird way, it was funny, but also like, okay, maybe these men in black are really out there with the neuralizers. The problem here this time around with Chris Hemsworth, a.k.a. Thor, and <laughs> Tessa Thompson, who was in the last Thor movie. A.k.a. Oh, Valkyrie. Weird. Yeah, Valkyrie, right. 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 Um, who I like a lot. I think she's terrific. Uh, she's also in the Creed movies, for people who don't know that. The Michael B. Jordan love interest, if you will. She's wonderful in that. Um, Chris Hemsworth, in particular, is so intent on showing us how funny he is. And he can be funny. It kind of reminded me of like when Roger Moore was sinking the Bond movies. <laughs> Remember that? I, because, I liked Roger And then Moore. Daniel Craig resuscitated oh, it. Even Pierce yeah. Brosnan in a way, but especially Daniel Craig. Because, again, he, was, you know, he gave us the gritty Bond living in a world <laughs> mm-hmm. where there was real peril. And if you've got Chris Hemsworth, who's like beyond the perfect looking human being right. and all the humors about how he can just wink at the aliens and he even has like <laughs> inner species, you know, romances and stuff. We lose all the fun of the action and the action's kind of uh, disappointing. I too. feel like with Chris Hemsworth, we've seen him now in Ghostbusters. We saw mm-hmm. him in the Avengers movies playing mm-hmm. Thor. It, it was in the vacation like, reboot. Yeah, you it, know. Feels like, it feels like they re- Hollywood loves that he's funny. Yeah. And, and they're getting away from the fact that he made his name on being an action star. Yeah, and he is a great action star. And, and Justin's absolutely right. And you just know that he's sitting there saying, you know, I'm very funny. In Australia, when I was coming up, I was on soap operas and gang shows. And I was much funnier than just good looking. And they all go, okay, Chris, okay. I want to be like the rock meets Arnold meets Adam Sandler. Give me some of those projects. Exactly. And they're giving them to him. Like, and, yeah, it works. And that's fine, but this 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 lacks any heft. I give it two stars. Oh, all right. And I think I'm, I'm being I'm being kind on that. It's one of those franchises that's been almost ten years since the last one, and the last one wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. It feels a little desperate on Hollywood's okay, part. Okay, the one part about what I what grabbed my attention was that both of the stars are do play uh, off each other in different movies. Mm-hmm. Meaning Batessa and, and Chris are in Avengers, they were in the uh uh, Ragnarok. Right. Been, uh, is that a? I, I was thinking in history. I was trying to roll back. Like, are there points where people were stars in other movies where they ended up being? It's different interesting because in both. Well, in his case, you know, he's been pretty well known. Tessa Thompson's got a great career going. She's also in the West World on the HBO. Yeah, right. I mean, she's wonderful. Uh, I still say on the rise in terms of her career. I think in this case, it's more just coincidence. I do want to share a clip from here. Oh. This contains some of the best dialogue from Men in Black International. Press the button. Turn it up at you. That's it. Oh, great! That's, all. That's our clip there. Wait, for so you. she's a woman in black? Classic. She is, is that, yes. Yeah. And and for, even in the men in black, and, and she's a woman. Yes. In black. And for the second time in as many weeks, we get the you know obligatory. Seems like it's crowbarred in, patting themselves on the back feminist statement first we got it with x-men where the right. characters goes what about the x-women and now in men in black they go, what about the women in black and, uh, then, and then, then you know the, the super we're, we're working on it it's like okay we get it he's we a, get it he's a super feminist how much did chris emsworth make as opposed to tessa thompson let's talk <laughs> yeah right well talk, then right. you know that would be an interesting yeah, okay. comparison so stay away from that one stay two stars guys the heck away from right. it um do you want to talk about late night yeah yes. now this is interesting too because we have another thompson emma thompson who's also in Men in Black International, and if you happen to see clips from the two movies, you'll note that she has the exact same haircut, just different color. So you know she did these movies like in the back same month. Um, now this one we like. I'm going to tell you that in advance. I'm giving three stars to Late Night, and we love them. I love Mindy Kaling. I, do I just too. think she's, she's terrific. A favorite. And uh, as you guys may know, uh, she wrote and produced this, and it's loosely based on her own experiences because when she was 22 years old, 
she was flat out, she'd be the first one to say that she was a diversity hire on The Office as a writer. They had all white men and they looked around and said, you know, we should change this. She joined mm-hmm. the staff as a writer, soon became a featured player, became a producer on the show. In this movie, she plays someone whose last job was at a chemical plant, but <laughs> Emma Thompson <laughs> plays a late night talk show host. Even though it's a woman, she's very Letterman-esque. She's in her like 29th year. She doesn't want to have the YouTube stars on her show. She won't go out on the streets and do the bits anymore. She's resting on her laurels. And she's told one day, you know, you have all white men and you've never had a woman on uh, mm. on your writing staff. So she hires Mindy Kaling, who's got all the check marks. And here's a, here's a clip. This is the Mindy's uh, first day on the job as a writer for the late night talk show. I don't know. Maybe I just move back to Pennsylvania. Can I give you some advice? You need to shut up. Excuse me? If you hear something you don't agree with, you have to resist the urge to give your opinion. I will not be marginalized by the iron fist of white privilege that pervades this work environment. I am not trying to silence your strong female Indian woman of color spirit. Hashtag me too. Trans is beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. You're still a new writer with no experience. You need to stop giving advice and write something. You're a writer, so write. I love that scene. Mm -hmm. Um, So you know, feels very honest. You know, she's she's making they're making their statements here, but you know, really doing it within this kind of soft. It's really almost like a rom com. It's you know, plays like that. Although the romance is really just between Mindy and and her job and her situation. I just love her. The trailer has a great scene where she walks in and she goes to sit down and they like, you can't sit there someone else is sitting there. She's like, I'll just take the trash can. I'll sit on the trash can. It's very comfortable. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'll sit on the trash can. That's great. That's great. And Emma Thompson is great as this cold, distant, you know, institution who's basically being forced out and like, she'll go into the writer's room and says like, you know, where's Malcolm? And they're like, he passed away from pancreatic cancer (laughs) six years ago. Oh, did I send a card? I'm sorry to hear that. (laughs) So, three stars for that. Three stars. I like the the fact that it does make points about you know me too and women in the workplace but it's also just really kind of light and entertaining and mindy kaling i mean she reminds me of like mary tyler moore throwing she's her hat in the air in this in this role she's so fun and, so and cool where do we so see smart. this is this major theater this is release a, yeah this is yeah. a major theatrical release i hope it does well i hope people see late night instead of men in black international which will dominate the box office but i don't yeah. think it's going to be a huge hit dark phoenix bombed uh, last week as mm. well mm-hmm. because it was terrible Good. Well, it's good to hear that, like, you know, they don't Sometimes just Sometimes word of mouth and critical uh, consensus can help. I, I agree. Steer people to the good movies. Go to the good movies. Go to the good movies. They'll make more of them. <laughs> Go to the okay? light. Go to the light. <laughs> Stay away from the men in black. The men in black. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Shaft, do we want to go to that one? Okay. Let's do that. Samuel um, L. Jackson is uh, in Shaft. Yeah. You know, here's 20 years one. later. No, here, yeah. Here's another one. It's been almost 20 years since the, the, the Samuel L. Jackson Shaft, which was in 2000. Now, the original Shaft was 1970. 71, Richard oh. Roundtree, and you know, he was a bad mother, shut your mouth. And that was actually a really well done neo noir kind of, you know, black exploitation, maybe the best of all those films. Uh, and the only thing that's really held since then is the theme song, which is still the Oscar winning uh, score uh, from Isaac Hayes. So now we're at the third generation hmm. shaft. And we've got young JJ, his dad, he has not seen since he was a baby. And young, the, the, the third uh, shaft generation, this kid is MIT educated, uh, you know, very kind of soft, very different from his dad. But now he needs his dad's help in solving a crime. What is wrong with you? I always picked up a bat. You can't beat up a woman. Why not? Because she's a woman. That's like misogynistic. If you want being misogynistic, I ain't mention her gender. Okay. I'm an equal opportunity ass whooper. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's a lot of that. This movie is homophobic, Islamophobic, uh, misogynist for sure, uh, and and just dumb <laughs> as well. So overall, a summer blockbuster. Oh, I, I, you know, it's, it'll it be great and, globally. And, and, and really, it's so it's so bad, and it's so disappointing to see this because you know you do have uh, you know the three generations of chefs. Kind of an interesting idea, but the, the script feels like it was dusted off from 1975, and then they take like shots at people that, that don't need to deserve a shot. Sam Jackson character keeps questioning his son's sexuality because the kid is well dressed and nonviolent, and he actually call, calls him Don Lemon at one point because no that's an way. insult, I guess, because Don Lemon's gay and well dressed. And I'm like, how did they let that get into this movie? How? How? Don Lemon is a bad mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs> So, one and a half stars. Shaft is terrible. Oh, gee. This is, I mean, I'm sorry. You, you can hear it drip from stuff. your voice. Oh, man, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Disappointment. My buddy Michael Phillips, my cohort over at the trip, he didn't even review it. Because there wouldn't. were so many movies this week. He goes, you know what? I'm not even going to bother with it, but it's really bad. <laughs> That's it. That was his Does tweet that review. Happen? 
Michael actually did. He's like, I, I can't write about it. You write about it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all you. yours, it's Rich. It's on you. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break here, and then we'll come okay. back with more of Richard Roper's cool. reviews. We still have the, the zombie movie with Bill Murray. I don't quite understand, but the you'll dead explain. don't die. Dead don't die. A zomcom, as it's yes. called, right? From a rom-com to a zomcom. Yes. We'll find out if Bill Murray is good coming up, but let's check in and find out what's happening the bottom of the hour in the WGN News. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, Richard Roper. Go see Rocket Man. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Doing his reviews. Yes. Um, and you said the, the non-Will Smith Men in Black with a Woman in Black gets two stars. Yeah. Late Night Rom-Com three stars. Yes, Mindy we Kingling. like that one. Shaft one and a half. Terrible. Samuel Jackson. Awful, <laughs> awful, awful, awful. The Dead Don't Die, the a dead don't zombie die. movie. It's with a Bill zom-com, Murray. as you mentioned zom-com. here. So uh, Jim Jarmusch, who's always been an interesting director. Justin, I know you oh, love his God, work, right? He once did a movie called Coffee and Cigarettes, yeah. which uh, yep. which if you have a chance to check it out, it's, it's this amazing series of vignettes, including one in which Bill Murray plays Bill Murray, but he's working as a busboy, a waiter in a diner. <laughs> and Murray right. always goes back to Jim Jarmusch. He loves They'd him. Always yeah. work together. So The Dead Don't Die is a zombie movie. It's set. It's very much kind of like almost like a Twin Peaks type of thing. It's very deadpan in more ways than one. The fun conceit here is that Adam Driver and Bill Murray, okay, they play the small town cops in Centerville. What a combo. And because of uh, fracking, the, the earth has fallen off its polar axis and all kinds of weird things are happening. The sun's never going down. And now that the undead are starting to walk the earth. Um, and one of the cool things in the movie is that Adam Driver is aware of the fact they're in a movie from the start. Bill Murray, not so much. So at one point, Adam Driver keeps saying, like, I got to feeling something's really going to go wrong. And Bill Murray's like, why do you keep saying that? He goes, because I read the whole script. And then Murray says, you got the whole script? I only got the sides with my part in it. So I don't know what happened. So okay. it's one of those kind of Classic, things if you're into yeah. it. A little meta. Yeah, very yeah. meta. So here's a scene. Okay. Uh, Chloe Savigny also plays a young police officer. She has no idea she's in a movie. And this is her with Adam Driver and Bill Murray as things are starting to go really bad and zombies are starting to walk the streets. Guys, shouldn't we be telling each other that it's all going to be okay? That this will all go away like a bad dream? Ronnie? Gee, Mindy, I'm not sure I can say that. (laughs) Cliff? Please? It's all going to be okay, Mindy. Maybe it'll all just go away like a bad dream. I doubt it. (laughs) (laughs) Because he's read the script! So, you know, if you're zombied out, this is kind of a fun, like, almost antidote to that because of the fact that they're kind of aware of it and still has some really And it plays? Fun it works th- like that? It does. That can go one way or That the can other. get old. I mean, yeah. it could be a great SNL skit, right. Justin. You're absolutely right. Uh-huh. Uh, and it does have some, it, you know, in the social commentary, it gets a little heavy-handed at times. But, you know, who better than, than Steve Buscemi to play <laughs> a crazy, racist, paranoid <laughs> farmer wearing a red hat that says, make America white again, oh. just, in ca- in ca- oh. just in case you're not getting the message at one point in this thing. <laughs> But I liked it. Dead Don't Die. Three living stars. Right. Three the dead don't stars. Die. All right. So go see The Dead Don't Die with yeah. Bill Murray. He's always good. We yeah, love Bill Murray. Love Bill. And then uh, and then also see Late Night. Yes. Avoid the shaft. Avoid, yes. the, avoid. The, the men in black. Both exactly. of those. Goodbye. Exactly. No way. There you go. We have just a, a few seconds here at Euphoria on HBO. Yeah, I've seen so many trailers of this. This is heavily promoted. Yeah. And uh, we can talk about this maybe a little bit more tomorrow as well. But Euphoria is an HBO series. It's getting on. The Parents Television Council is warning everybody about it. They haven't seen it. Uh, it's a limited series about teenagers who are deep into sex addiction, drug addiction, violence. It's very much like a movie called Kids from the 90s or Less Than Zero from back in the oh, day. Yeah. It's the kind of movie, you know, like a lot of parents are going to see it and really want to check out their kids' phones, even though they know that they shouldn't, but maybe they should. I think it's great. If you watch it and see it all the way through, it is not glamor- glamorizing or glorifying drug use or any of this stuff. you got to watch it all, th- all the way through. And Zendaya, who started off as a Disney Channel yes. star, and then we've seen her in the Spider-Man movies and other things, is the star of this, and it is a revelation how good she is. She is Greatest on her way showman. to becoming a huge star. Greatest you know? showman, too. That's right. Greatest right. showman. She's yeah, I mean, she's only 22 or 23. Gosh. Uh, so she's young enough that is we that believe it? her as a 17-year-old, but also veteran enough to handle this, the heavy, heavy scene here and she is Emmy worthy in this film mm. in this, this series. It's, it's what it's hard to watch because it's so real oh, and man. that it's like what's growing up what it's like to grow up today. In this day is and that age. We get a lot of backstories on these troubled kids, get... finding out what happened to them in each time we go back to when they were eleven years old and we find out certain things about them that kind of explain why they're on the path they're on. But I mean this is intense stuff. There was a young actor rapper who actually 
quit the show halfway through uh, filming because he, he didn't feel comfortable with some of the scenes he had to do with, oh with some gosh. violence toward women and stuff. And he goes, I know it's acting, but it's not for me. And they actually had to replace him and reshoot the wow. scenes. And I respect that too, you know what I mean? But again, if you check it out, Euphoria on HBO, it's not just this gratuitous... Our heavy R-rated, uh, sensationalistic look at teen life. It's it's you know it's a, a slice of reality. Is it a, is it something appropriate for teens? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I mean, if you're 16 or 17, you know about this life, this and and not know. everybody, not every single teenage character here is on drugs or you know promiscuous. There are a lot of other uh, storylines as well. And Maud, Maud Apatow, who was the daughter of Judd Apatow oh. and Leslie Mann. Uh, is terrific in this as well, young actress. All right. Really good cast. Richard Roper, we'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow. as well. Awesome. Thank you for that and Thanks, much buddy. more to talk about tomorrow because, as you said, very busy week. It is.